during this uh, challenging time, I think uh, we all actually face various types of uh, mental challenges. How to overcome all the situations, how to face the pandemic threats, how to liaise with unknowns and new norm, and how to also now adjust back to the original norm or the new and revised or uh, new kind of norm and all that. The, the world is no longer the same, okay? So today, I would like to share with you some of the findings and also some of the uh, uh, teachings of Buddha and then to see how we can actually uh, use it and how we can actually adjust ourselves so that we can actually handle it better. Now, let us look at the universe, okay? As you can see uh, on the screen here, the universe is vast. In fact, uh, every day, astronomers, is actually, they are trying to find out more and beyond the boundary of the current universe. The, those that we know is observable uh, universe. And if you look at the uh, upper right corner of the picture, there is actually a picture, uh, a, const a big collection of all the galaxies uh, where Milky Way, our galaxy, is just a small red dot there. And it is connected to so many galaxies and we form a big cluster of Laniakia. Okay? But of course, beyond this one, there are also more. So as you can see, the universe is vast, but they are also close to us. Okay, Like for example, if we actually look at sunlight outside the door, outside our windows and all that, just imagine the sunlight, the photon that we receive, they just actually departed from the sun about eight minutes ago. Just imagine these photons, this light, eight minutes ago, they were actually from the surface of the sun. But now it reached Earth and all that. So they are very close. Okay. So every day, every morning, we have the blessing of, uh, from the sunlight that gives us strength and all that. Huh? So it is the nature is actually very close to us. But sometimes it has become a norm that we forget about that. Okay, so and if you look at it from Big Bang to cells, okay, Big Bang until now is about 13.7 billion years ago when we started with the Big Bang. And the age of Milky Way is 13.2 billion years. Solar system is about 4.6 billion years because this solar system that we assist in is already considered second generation of the solar system. In this uh, 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 in this region, okay, that's why we have all those uh, 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 the uh, what we call the uh, the metals, the iron, uh, all the uh, the irons, uh, the uh, gold, all these heavy metals that we have, it has to come from the second generation or third generations or further generations of the solar system. So that means that the solar system once here was actually destroyed or actually uh, 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 vanished due to its actually original cause and then regain the, uh, the gravity actually uh, collects them again and then form another solar system. Okay, and the age of Earth is 4.5 billion years. And first cell on Earth was estimated to be 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago. So just imagine 3.5 to 3.8 million ago with the single cell. Now we actually have moved on and you can see the variety of species that we have nowadays on Earth. And the world is actually very, very com complicated or uh, complex, but at the same time, very dynamic. Just when I'm talking uh, you all and all that, number of air molecules in one breath, you just take a one deep breath, uh, uh, deep breath and all that. We are actually inhaling so many uh, molecules, air molecules in one breath, you know, and then you exhale out. And all. So every day we are interacting with so many molecules, okay? And number of cells in human is 37.2 trillion. There are so many cells in our body and each one of them is actually operating as its own and working with other cells together and all that, okay? And even the bacteria cells in our human being uh, is actually about 39 trillion. So in our body, we have bacteria cells is about half 
compared to our originals, our own body cells and all that. So we are actually co-existent in that nature. Sometimes we don't know something happened and all that. Maybe it's not our cells. It's because the bacteria cell, the bacteria community in our stomach, in our gut and all that, they are not so healthy. They create some problem to us. So even human body itself, as what uh, even the Buddha has said and all that, the nature, the environment, we are living in a big community. We are we are coexisting uh, together and we need to help each other. That's why nowadays you can see that uh, although we talked about fourth industrial revolution, people are starting talking about greener earth, people are starting talking about sustainable development, people are realizing uh, the harmony with the nature is very, very important. If you look at an evolution of earth since the beginning of the earth, 4.6 billion years ago, there were times where the whole earth was icy. The, all the, uh, the, the surface of earth was covered by thickness, uh, big thickness of ice and all that. And then later, of course, with the volcano activities, if the ice that actually melt it again and all. So all these years, as you know, there were there have been big supercontinent a few times. And then now we have this, uh, now we have the seven continents on Earth. So even the Earth from long duration of time, it has actually changed. Change is something permanent in that sense. Okay. Either from ourselves or for the biggest structure of this one. So we must understand that change is something that is moving on. Every day is changing and all that. But how to adapt to this change? How to actually treat this change? How to actually live with the changes is something very, very important. If you look at evolution of life from Earth, from the single cell until then, we have the dinosaur and we have uh, all these elephants uh, the, uh, and also our ancestors and all that. It has actually gone through the whole evolution of life on Earth. Even now, actually, when we talk about uh, the apes and, and, and all that, you can see that human, this is the branch of the trees that uh, how many millions ago and then we were together, okay? But slowly it branched out. And then we have gorilla, we have orangutans, we have bonobos, we have chimbazi and all that, okay? So this is actually how we like to actually link all these to, to life and all that. So when you look at this one, you start thinking about natural law of cause, effects, and conditions. In fact, all the changes, all the environment, all the things and all that is based on cause, effect, with conditions. When the conditions is right, you have this effect. Okay? We have this effect and all that. Just the universe itself is like that one. You never know uh, because even our sun is rotating around the, the, uh, our Milky Way, the center of our Milky Way. And the Milky Way itself is also actually moving in one direction in the universe and all that. Okay, And then we never know. Who knows there may be actually an asteroid coming. We never know. Okay, Or in the passage of this one, the galaxy, people actually also even suggest that maybe long, long, long time from now, okay, our galaxy will be close to another galaxy, okay? And you look at the Earth, the human world, and even our life itself, when we were born and until we are actually uh, aged and all that, okay? So all based on cause, effect, and conditions. Today, we have this opportunity that we gather here together, okay? But about a year ago, <laughs> we were actually meeting each other online. Online. Just imagine just a year ago. Okay. Uh, so that is something that we have to actually contemplate. Uh, uh, the teaching of Buddha about cause, effect, and conditions. Now let us look at it from statistical point of view. Statistical point of view. Uh, how many choices we need to make every day? Just ask yourself. When you wake up and all that, you have to think about brush of teeth, uh, which uh, glove you want to uh, you 
wear this morning, what type of breakfast you want to take, when you go out, what type of road you want to take, and along the way there will be traffic jam or traffic lights and all, all kinds of things in the office and then that. We have to make many choices a day. Okay. But knowing from the statistical point of view, is not uh, we have this normal distribution. So there tend to be that some choices are good choices. <laughs> some choices may not be that good. <laughs> like for example, you go to this pizza uh, store shop or this bread uh, uh, restaurant and all that, you normally order this or you normally order this char kway teow and that. But today, maybe the cook did not cook it well. <laughs> so you didn't have a good char kway teow, for example. Okay, So in a day, you can see there's always this distribution sometimes good choices sometimes bad choices but majority are in between and all that okay but if we insist on every choice to be the best choice it will be difficult for us it will be difficult for us because outside world there are many things we cannot control the moment we actually drive our car out and all that suddenly today from your your house to your office uh, suddenly all along the way, all the traffic light you meet, you meet uh, are all red lights. <laughs> then you have to wait. And certain day, you were so lucky that, oh, very smooth. Every time it's green light and all that. Okay? So from this point of view, if you try to calculate the probability of being lucky or blessed every week, every month, or even we request every year, we must be all the time blessed and, and very lucky. Uh, this is actually very difficult from statistical point of view, because outside world, there are many things that you cannot control. Like for a moment that you say, today I want to have a, go, go there to do a sport, or uh, have a football match and all that, suddenly it rains. There's nothing we can control. But there's one thing we can do, which is our mind. How our mind treat all this situation, how our mind adjusts to all this situation, uh, this is actually calm the mind. In fact, it's easier than calm the outside world. <laughs> because outside world, you have no control at all. Just like nowadays, we have Facebook, we have newspaper, we have online news. Every day, you look at uh, you know, the wall, uh, you look at uh, the logistic problem, you look at many things happening in the world. In the past, maybe 30 years ago, we don't have internet. So you are not exposed, you are not actually, sometimes the war, maybe after one, two years, only you know about this, or after one month or whatever. But now, because of information flow and all that, or tsunami of information, normal people like us must now actually live like a politician in the sense that you receive all kinds of news, complain, feedback, uh, this here and there and all that. But there are a lot, many things we are out of our control, our control, like the pandemic and those kind of things. But what we can do is actually yourself, what you can do, how we actually treat our mind, how do we calm our mind, how do we adapt ourselves. And that is something more manageable. Okay, Just like black swan effects and the uncertainty. For example, the 9-11, September 11 event is considered as a black swan effect. What does it mean by black swan effect? That is actually because in the old days, before the uh, Western explorers come to the Oceania continent, they thought that all the swans are white until they found black swan in the Oceania continent. And suddenly it's just there. It is not because that particular moment, suddenly the swan become black. The black swan has always been there. Okay, So that normally refers to incidents that are unlikely to happen, but if happen, will bring great impact, which can be positive great impact or negative. Like for, some, for example, the September 11 effect is a black swan effect to the Americans. For example, the internet to us is actually bringing great impact. We never expect it. And suddenly, it's just here. WhatsApp and Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and all that. Okay. So, in, in the teaching of Buddha, we always say that anything, everything is changing except the change itself. Okay. So, when we actually treat all these things which is impermanent, 
impermanence, okay, we like to treat in a very positive way of, by knowing the nature of impermanence. So understanding impermanence, we treasure our life when things go well. Because you know, sometime in future may not be that well. Okay, so we treasure every moment when we are enjoying life. For example, now we are feel so lucky compared to last year. We have the way, we have the chance to meet each other physically. Uh, uh, so we actually feel blessed and we are thankful that with efforts of everybody, today we can come out and actually live normal life. Okay, contemplating impermanence, we live with hope when life is difficult. Of course, life sometimes can be difficult, but because life, difficult life is also impermanent because it's subject to conditions. Okay, so as long as we put in effort with the help of others, we can actually change difficult time to back to be back to normal. Okay, that is the teaching of Buddha about how we actually view about impermanence. Okay? Like for example, sometimes uh, 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 the a small young kid, right? for example, suddenly he actually uh, she, he, uh, goes to his mother and says, I have stomach, stomach ache pain. Okay? Very painful and all that. So that is because a difficult time. Okay? But what we know is actually the mother will bring the son to the doctor and take some medicine and after all, the stomach brain no longer is there. Okay? The same thing as also the same thing like economy situation now. Maybe now it's a really difficult time. But you know, after pandemic, there's always this adjustment and all that. Okay? But if together we put in efforts and all that, things will become better. Oh, that is the nature of impermanence. Now, so knowing about this one, some of people actually because of pandemic start wondering or start worrying about what if in future there will be even bigger pandemic coming out. How do we deal with, with the climate change, with the global warming? Are we able to actually overcome this one? Now you look at this, this is history of the earth itself. We have actually experienced five times of mass extinction of species. If you look at upper right corner of this image, those uh, graph that shows the deep and all that uh, is actually the time when we have mass extinction event where 10%, 15%, and even sometimes 30, 40% of the species on earth extinct, extinct, became extinct and all that. Okay, But you look at later, because of the nature of the world, okay, it grows it actually evolved and all that. And you can see the number of species climb up again, climb up again. And in fact, now is actually the highest in this uh, history of the evolution of life on Earth. Okay? We have more species compared to the early days and all that. Okay? So the nature itself has the power of healing it itself. Okay? Now, the next slide, you look at it, the tree of life. This is a very interesting... Uh, Diagram. Okay, how to view this diagram? Uh, for example, at the center, you can see this is the beginning of the earth. Okay, earth birth. Okay, then when it goes to 3.6 billion years, you have the single cell coming out, and then the bacteria it comes out under this bacterial stream and all that. And then it branch up to eukaryotes, plants, fungi, uh, postotoms, uh, sharks, fish, and all that. And of course, you can see that over here, there's the time of dinosaur, right? The time of dinosaurs and all that. And after that, when uh, six, uh, 66 millions ago, okay, dinosaur actually because of the event, of uh, destructive event, you know, they, they become esteemed, okay? And then you can see the gap quickly are actually filled by other species and all that. Of course, Birds are also descendants from there as well. Okay, and then from the mammalia, from the mammals. Okay, you can see it branch out and all that. And here we have actually human being coming up. Okay, so it's very interesting that from the whole world, how all this life actually evolved and all. That. Then you look at it. This is actually a a a graph that shows history of pandemics. 
you can see from the scenes, even as early as 1300, the back, the black death, remember the, the big pandemic during that time that killed a lot of people until the recent years and all that. Okay. Now, as we actually exploit more of the environment and more interactions, uh, human networking interactions and all that, the occurrence of the pandemic become more frequent. Okay. But what I would like to share with you is actually there are ways we can actually overcome this. There are ways we can overcome. Just like I, as I have shown you, even during the mass extinction time and all that, the world itself actually will actually heal. Who knows? We, we never know. Okay. But as long as with the collective effort, we'll be able to overcome this. Uh, the, the next slide also show you. Lah, okay. For example, all the uh, pla uh, sorry, plague and also flu and Ebola cases, swine flu, SARS, and then now COVID-19. Okay. So from there, I would like to share with something, something with you, very interesting thing about evolution of life. Okay. Professor, Professor Tech, uh, Max, Max Tech Ma of MIT came up with the idea of the life 1.0, life 2.0, and life 3.0. Okay. According to him, life 1.0 is actually the life that they evolve with gene transfer just like bacteria, just like animals, just like plants and all that. From one generation to next generation, it's through the gene that they transfer the knowledge to the next generation. If they can adapt to the nature, they survive. If they not, then they, they, they won't be able to thrive. Okay? So the nature actually gives them a chance of evolving. Okay? This is life 1.0. But human world, maybe it's the only species on earth that managed to move on to life 2.0. In the life 2.0, because we know how to communicate using language, we actually have education. So during the lifetime of our descendants, during the lifetime, we can actually, through education, transfer our knowledge to the next generations. And we can learn from each other. That's why we move very fast. We don't have to wait until one generation, one generation. We can actually transfer our knowledge and all that. This is life 2.0. For example, the COVID-19 pandemic is actually the battle, the battle between life 1.0 and life 2.0 because the virus, the COVID virus actually keeps evolving, mutating and all that. Okay, But human world, by knowing when it happened first in, in, for example, it happened in China, then quickly they share the knowledge with others about the virus. Then different parts of the world with education, with research, came up with vaccine. Right? Came up with vaccine and all that. Okay. So now even these, the virus has actually mutated and we have different mutations and variants and all that. Nah? There is still life 1.0. Still life 1.0. But human world through life 2.0, we share our knowledge, we share among ourselves that, yeah, you can wear masks so that you can protect yourself. This is way and all that. So with this one, we are able to overcome this problem faster and more efficient and all that. So it is life 2.0. Okay. Now, then of course, uh, knowing about this one, I propose that maybe we have moved from life 2.0 to life 2.1 because now not only we create knowledge and all that, we are creating our digital twins in the cyber world. We are spending more time in our cyber world and in the cyber world, it's like another life of us, okay? People share their experiences, people share their thoughts and all that. We are actually more and more Okay, living in the cyber world. Okay, so this is let me life 2.1. But how to actually strike a balance between our digital life and our physical life is now getting more and more important. Okay, more and more important. Okay, so that is something that we are actually facing now. And of course, according to Professor Max Tegmark, life 3.0 will be the time when we have superhuman. What does he mean by superhuman? Because uh, life 2.0, you can transfer the knowledge, okay? And life 
you can actually replace or exchange or whatever, uh, uh, replace that. You can replace your old organs with new organs. Okay, now that nowadays you know some people have the knee change. Okay, nowadays the people have a cataract and they have this uh, change and all that. So all these are getting more and more that we are able to create something that can replace. So they even say that in future, who knows, all our limbs, uh, our organs and all that can be replaced. Okay, and, and then that prolongs the life of human being. And maybe one day we have superhuman and maybe even one day we can transfer our knowledge from one brain to a new brain. <laughs> Maybe this small scientific uh, science fiction, uh, okay? But that is what we call superhuman. But at the same time, with the development of technology and all that, we are seeing more and more intelligent AI robots. And who knows, maybe in future it's life form. Uh, so life 3.0 may be the coexistence of these two. Okay, so from here we can see that that is the development. Uh, in the evolution of life and all that, okay? And we are seeing also more and more intelligent robots as well. For example, the robots that, we able, that was able to actually beat the AI machines that was able to beat human chess player, Go player. As you can see that uh, in this screen, uh, uh, sorry, on this screen, uh, you can see that the robot from Boston Dynamics that it can walk like normal people, it can run like more, more, more normal people, and it can do work like normal people. So during this pandemic time, in fact, they have actually rolled out four leg robots to the industry. Now you can buy their robots from them and use in your in your operations and all that. And in future, who knows? Maybe we are going to create all these nano robots. Okay, so in future, when we are sick, instead of actually taking medicine and all that, what the doctor will do is that they inject all these nano robots into our bloodstream. And this nano robot will go and identify the bacteria, will go and identify the virus, and then kill them one by one. And then with the single instructions uh, through maybe wireless communication, instruct that, okay, now you have actually killed all the virus, okay. In your body now please come out then the robot will come out through your uh, kidney and all that and then you extract out so who knows that is possible okay all all these swarm of robots the robots that can connect among themselves and do many things okay uh, do other things as well okay now so if you look at all this technology development and all that this is what we talk about evolutions of human society from primitive time until this agricultural, industrial, commercial, ICT and internet, and now the robotic intelligent world. Okay, this is the human world, uh, the human society, how it evolves and all that. And you, if you compare from primitive world until now, the robotic and intelligent world, we all agree there has been a lot of improvement in technology. But the key thing is still, the human mind is always the one that we have not tackled with. The human mind. You see, even if you look at this virtual world, people have created this virtual world in a game, in a computer games, in a second life, in many places and all that. What is the main theme in all this virtual world? You can still can see love, hate, War, battle, you can still all see this thing because of the mind. Although how advanced that technology, even in the cyber world and all that, you still have this one. Even in movies, uh, we talk about like this very realistic movie like the virtual world, Ready Player One, okay, Variant, Matrix, Avatar and all that. They show us that in future, what is possible or in other parts of the world, what is possible, what it may be coming. But even in this world, you can see the human emotions are still there. Still human emotions are still there. So that means that the technology will continue to improve. We have fourth industrial revolution, we have fifth industrial, sixth industrial revolution, we have 5G, 6G, 7G and all that. Okay, But it all comes back to our human mind. 
how we can have a better management control of our human mind is very important. For example, even you look at some of the science fiction movies, uh, like the Star Wars, the Interstellar, Star Trek, and all that. Uh, sometimes we say not it's not made the force <laughs> be with you, or maybe the made the emotion be with you. It's, you can see everywhere. So, in view of this one, uh, this uh, Dalai Lama actually has actually supported. Uh, supported uh, Professor Paul Ekman, okay, a very famous psychologist, okay, to actually get the help of uh, 248 global top psychologists with research area. They go and survey all those uh, 200, close to 300 famous psychologists in the world and ask them, ask them, list now what are the most important emotions in the human world. And they came up with this conclusions that uh, anger, human emotions, about 91% will say this is uh, something that common, uh, very important. Fear, 90%. Disgust, 86%. Sadness, 80%. Enjoyment, 86% of that. Okay? So all these one, two, three, four, five, if you look at these five different kinds of uh, emotions, okay, you can actually find all these emotions represented in the movie called Inside Out. If you go and watch the movie, inside there, there are these five main characters, am I right? My king, and these are actually were referred to this study. They create these five characters and see how in everyday life, a small little girl, how he see how she sees the world. And how she ha can collect a good memory, how she can recall a good memory, how she can actually see the brightness and help her overcome the challenges in life and all that, inside out and all that. So that uh, they have actually created a website you know, called Atlas of Emotions. Atlas of Emotions. You can search Atlas of Emotions. Uh, inside this Atlas of emotion. When you click on anger, fear, and others, and all that, you can see that they tell you there are different levels of angers and how it originated from. And because Dalai Lama thinks that uh, if you know the source of why you have this emotion, you'll be able to uh, actually address it or actually reduce it better. Okay, that is their approach, elements of emotion. Okay, so now. <laughs> We are actually, sometimes we talk about crisis, crisis in, in a company, uh, in the country, in the many things, sometimes things that we handle about crisis. Now, crisis in Chinese is called Wei Qi. It's called Wei Qi. The way itself, the first one is danger. Danger, it brings you dangers and all that. But at the same time, it also brings you opportunity to change, to improve and all that. Okay, so it's very actually unique word uh, uh, that always give us hope. Always give us hope and all that. And in English, now they are coming up with new word. They think that, oh, this way Qi is very nice. So English world, they are trying to say adversity plus opportunity. So some people, people like to call it opportunity. <laughs> when you face with difficult situation, adversity, there's always opportunity for us to improve. Because all these challenges and all that remind us that not to live in the normal norm, remind us that what is lacking, what should we do? And we, if we take action, we'll be able to overcome, we'll be able to improve on this one and then brings opportunity of growth. Okay, that is something that I'd like to share with you. Just like we are sailing across the life oceans, ocean of life, uh, Okay, it's like that when we are sharing a cross and all that. There were times it was peaceful, you know, peaceful in the oceans and all that. There were there were times that were raining, there were actually all these big wave, big wave coming out and all that. Okay. So sometimes when we see a wave coming out and all that, suddenly we feel that oh, it's difficult for us to overcome this big wave coming when you're sailing across the ocean. But surprisingly, if you look at this one, when the wave is coming closer and closer, you find out that the place, the, the ocean surface that the boat is located is also rising in the level. 
because there are people coming to help. There are people coming to help and all that. And then when the wave is up and all that, then it raises to the highest of the wave, then it comes down again, then the wave passes away. So that's why in all crises, all these challenges and all that, together with our own faith, our own efforts, and with the help of others and all that, things will be over. Sailing across the life oceans. Okay, just imagine last century we have World War One, we have World War Two, and we have actually the Great Depression, you know, a uh, great the de- uh what's it uh recession, great recession period after World War One, right? Great recession period. It's all over. Human being, in fact, becoming more and more advanced in technology and other things. Okay, so Looking at back in the history and all that, there were times when killing was normal. But now, you know, life has changed, okay? But try to appreciate, try to be thankful, will always help us to sail through across the life ocean. And that is actually a, a very famous author, uh, Dr. Paul Stoltz, actually have come up with this book called Adversity Coalitions. Uh, in, according to this one, it's actually turning obstacle into opportunity. Okay, uh, uh, in this way, he actually tries to tell us that, in fact, nowadays, uh, when we actually educate our children and all that, and and upwards and all that, we are not talking about <laughs> just IQ, <laughs> but in addition to IQ, it's very important. Of course, you have emotional quotients, how to actually manage the emotions, and also same time. When we face with difficulty, challenges, how to actually handle and overcome this one. So in the book by Dr. Sorbs, he actually mentioned that this adversity uh, intelligence or adversity quotient or another that, he actually says it is like climbing hill. Climbing hill. We have a lot of people gathering at the uh, hill, uh, at, at the bottom of the hill and all that. Okay, And we look forward to climb the hill. Okay, there were people after a while actually give up. Okay, but there are also others who actually say, I want to climb to the top of the hill. And along the way, you know, you, you it, sometimes it's difficult for you to detour <laughs> when you actually are climbing up the hill because detour you have, uh, yeah, so you just continue and then until you reach the hill. But, but along the way, there may be a lot of obstacles. Okay, a lot of obstacles. But Overcome it one by one, and finally you reach a hill and all that. So this is some example he likes to share with us. Okay, now Professor Richard Davison, okay, uh, is actually a very famous, world famous uh, professor of psychology and psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin Madison. Okay, he was actually uh, 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 named by Times Magazine as the hundred most influential people in the world in 2006. So early this year, I had the opportunity to moderate to moderate one of the talk by him, okay, uh, uh, given to uh, online and all that. He said that there are four challenges that modern society is facing. First is distractibility. <laughs> he said because of mobile phones and all that, nowadays, it's quite common people who just, at any time when they are a little bit free, <laughs> The natural thing is go and grab phone and all that. We also noticed that, for example, recently I attended one occasion on the stage. On the stage, there were people actually walking across the stage uh, to receive something. Okay, the moment after receiving that award or whatever, and then when along the way coming down, naturally we were just walking like that one. A number of people naturally actually reach out to the phone and then take it out. But take it out, then they realize that it's actually on the stage. <laughs> then we put it back in. Okay. So uh, distractibility. Okay. Now, a lot of times, uh, because of distractions and all that, because when we actually, uh, for example, now we are actually listening to the talk. Okay. We are fully focused in the talk. So your mind is actually maybe in a calm, full state and all that, listening to the talk. But when you reach out to your handphone, you check WhatsApp, you check WeChat and all that. That can be good and bad news as well. So the moment if there's bad news and all that, then suddenly 
the the emotion is affected and all it distract and all that okay so he said that one of the biggest problem is distractibility because of the distraction and all that you don't focus on mind then you tend to actually think many things at one time in your brain think many things because while listening and uh, having here listening to the talk thinking about did i lock my car did i think about it oh. then because of sometimes because of the uh, natures and uh, because of courtesy and all that uh, you say maybe i wait until lah. maybe after the talk i'll go quickly and check lah. but after a while after five minutes did i lock the, the car <laughs> it keeps coming okay so nowadays why we actually feel we are we sometimes feel help, helpless is actually because there are so many things keep coming in back to us because of this distraction uh, uh, did i long call did when i go out just now did i switch off my gas <laughs> or, or whatever okay there are many things we think about and then because of that one we are not like computer, you know, computer can do multitasking. But if you know the how computer works, it is not doing multitasking. It just allocate a small, small time liters, uh, time slot and all that. And then every time in each time slot, it focus on only single one task. Okay, focus. Now, sometimes because of distractions and all that, then people start feeling loneliness. Because sometimes you have so many things and all that, you don't have the time to actually appreciate or enjoy or whatever. And then sometimes you may actually feel loneliness. And a lot of time there will be negative self-talk coming in, coming in and all that. Uh, uh, and this one is natural that the more you, you think about it, then it will come and drag on and all. Later, I will have one slide to tell you from medical science research why our brain will act like that one and how to overcome it. And then later, all these negative self uh keep uh, rotating and all that, and then feel depression and loss of meaning and purpose in life. Okay, so from here you can see that the source is actually coming back to the distractibility. So if we can actually address this distractibility, then slowly we will be able to overcome others slowly, slowly and all that. This is according to Professor Richard Davison. Okay, he was actually uh, 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 he, he actually studied uh, at Harvard University at that time together with Daniel Goleman, uh, the author of Emotional Intelligence. And recently, together with Daniel Goleman, Richard Davison, they wrote this book, Altered Traits. Because from their latest research, uh, they use this MRI, FR, MRI machines, and all. now they can detect how your brain works and all that. They actually find that science reviews that how meditation changes your mind, brain, and body. They say that all those things uh, is possible. It can be changed one. Because from an experiment, they were able to do so. Uh, I'll share with you more about this one. So sometimes we are always distracted by many things and thoughts. Sometimes please pay attention to bring back your attention. <laughs> or we always contact people through the internet and social media. Sometimes, please remember to call your inner self. Uh, some call your inner self. Now, two Harvard professors, sorry, two Harvard professors in 2010 actually did a survey, you know, did a very interesting research. What they do is actually, they actually surveyed 2,250 people, okay? And at random time, when these 2,250 people were doing different kinds of things, they reached to them, and then check with them whether what activities they are doing, how is the state of mind and those kind of things. Okay? And this was published in Science Journal. Okay? They found out that most people who are not happy during that time uh, because of the wandering mind. At that time, when they call and all that, if they are thinking about something and not, most of them will return that they are not so happy. But if they call and all that and know that those people are focusing on doing certain things, always the reply is actually happy. Okay, So that's why they have this conclusion. You can go to internet search science and then you look at this uh, 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 Harvard research on this uh, 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 focus mind or wandering mind and all that. You can see that. So they have the conclusion that a wandering mind is an unhappy mind. Okay, So coming back, from their research shows that if we can focus on things we do, 
uh, you can slowly, slowly actually have a, 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 a more happy mind. Uh, Professor Harari, Yuva Noah Harari, has written this very best sellers of the books, Serpents, Homo Dios, and then the latest book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. In the latest book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, he actually mentioned that there are two skills, there are future skills, very important for people to have it. Uh, the first skill is actually adaptability and keep learning, as what we know. Because new knowledge keep coming, new things keep coming and all that. New norm, we have to continue to learn new things. Uh, very important skill. And the second skill he says is very important is mental balance and emotional intelligence. How we actually can develop our mind to face with all those different, different, uh, different types of challenges and, and, and that we face and all that. Okay, so basically, these two essential skills Adaptability to outside change because outside is changing all the time. Today, you go out, your ways will tell you there's different road you have to choose <laughs> because uh, previous road you have chosen is now a more jam than others. So you have to adapt to it. Uh, then there are new shops coming out and there are old shops that has closed now. So we just adapt to the new, go to the new shops, uh, new restaurants and all that. Uh. So adaptability to outside change. This is how we deal with outside world. And inside world is inner mind tranquility, how to calm our mind and those kind of things. For example, Professor Harari, the person that I mentioned just now, who is actually famous globally for a lot of leaders, uh, how she managed to write up all these very important and very insightful books and all that. In his latest book, Insight, at the end, he actually disclosed how he managed to do so. He said, for many years, he has been doing meditation. <laughs> he has been doing it. And every year, he will spend some time for retreat in doing meditation or, and, and what, to actually uh, uh, calm and also soften his mind and all that. Okay? What is it? Sorry. Okay. Uh, 10, 30, oh, and half an hour. Okay? Now, so these two essential skills, how do we develop two, these two essential skills? Adaptability to outside change needs focused mind to learn and handle. When we are dealing with outside world, okay, like we are handling an a accident event, we are handling an a issue, we are having a dispute and all that, you need focused mind. Then only you know and you can actually address it better. Okay, an inner mind tranquility needs peaceful mind to practice and keep. Okay, so this is actually in a cycle, you know, in, in a cycle. When you have focused mind and you can deal with things properly one by one, you tend to have more peaceful mind. And with more peaceful mind, you'll be able to focus more and then you give lead you to even more peaceful mind and all that. So this is actually in a cycle, uh, in a cycle, how we manage to do it. So, Professor William James, a uh, father of American psychology, uh, uh, once actually wrote about this one. He said the most important in education is actually to teach ourselves how to continue to bring back our attention. He said this is the most important thing in education, how to bring, how to concentrate, how to bring back our attention from time to time every time so that we can focus and then you can learn better and all. This is actually shared by Professor uh, William James, uh, the father of uh, American psychology. So just now I mentioned about Daniel Goleman. Okay, Daniel Goleman was, is the author of the famous book, Emotional Intelligence. Remember 20, 30 years ago, all over the world people were talking about emotional intelligence. Daniel Goleman is the person and all that. And then after that, he wrote a book on social intelligence why is this important? And then uh, when the uh, when people start using handphone with the internet and all that, he wrote a book called Focus. He said the focus is, is the hidden driver of excellence. He said in this internet world and all that, if you are able to focus, ah, I think this is the important thing to have. Then later, the uh, two year, two, three years ago, he wrote together with Professor Richard Davidson that this author traits that show that scientifically shows that it is possible 
how we can actually change our mind uh, through meditation to others that, uh, to improve this. So in the book, Focus, in the book, Focus, he mentioned that when you have focus and all that, first of all, inner focus, you have more self-awareness of your state of mind. And then when you have other focus, you normally have empathy because you can notice how our people need help and all that and uh, what we can do and how you know how to actually understand the situation. And when something gets wrong or whatever, you won't be too uh, angry about this and all that. You have this empathy because you can focus on others. And then if you have outer focus, you can be aware of things changing, like the environment and all that. Because of focus, you know what is happening and all that. Huh? So that is uh, what he is actually stretching a lot now on focus. Now, knowing about focus, then knowing about our minds, which always have a lot of things in our mind and all that, can we now take a look at inside our brain and see what it is inside our brain? If you go inside our brain, this is what we see. There's no light inside there. It's black. <laughs> and so it, it's all through our neurons, connections that generate what we perceive the world. Just like what Buddha has said. Okay? What you see in the world is all your mind. Okay? If you want to treat it actually uh, 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 positively, then you can see all the bright world. If you want to see it negatively, then you see different part of the world. So sometimes Buddha say that uh, heaven and earth, uh, sorry, heaven and hell, okay, is actually based on what you actually see. Okay, so it's very important to cultivate our mind. So how to do so? You see, what new born baby sees? All the years and all that, when we start growing up, okay, we through our five senses, we receive all kinds of information into. And all this information we receive, then we, we interplay, then we store this one in our neural network. Neural network. And slowly, that is the one that shapes our thinking. Okay, that's why sometimes you see people from different backgrounds, uh, people from different culture, they see things differently. Why? You sometimes you cannot imagine why in this culture is like that. The other culture is the other thing. Okay, but to them it's quite natural because they were grown up like that one. They were grown up like that one because of the construction of inner world. Every day we are receiving new information. Is we are constructing our world, our mind, and all that. Oh, huh? so neuron interconnections in our in our neurons world uh, interconnection. Inside, we have 100 billion neurons and we have 100 trillion neuron connections. Every day, why we can learn is because we are learning, we are establishing new neuron connection. That's why we can learn. Even when you are 70 years old, 80 years old, 90 years old, the latest science shows that we can still learn because every day there's still neuron, new connection can be connected. Then, of course, every day, there are connect neuron connection that becomes uh, that fades away, that becomes not so useful and then lost the connection. Because some memory, you lost the memory about this one and all that. So that's why sometimes if we actually looking at uh, forming uh, 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 good connections and all that, slowly and slowly and all that, you can see that you tend to actually forget uh, uh, about the uh, old memory and all that. Now, this is actually a Google scientist working with uh, the Google scientists. Actually, uh, 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 they work on this part. Uh, this brain map, you can see that uh, inside our brain, there are so many neurons, right? And this light blue one is one neuron. And just imagine, all these uh, are the connection from the various other neurons to this neuron itself. Connection, you know, okay? So uh, uh, the brain map includes, uh, they have come out with brain map with 50,000 cells with 130 million connections, synapses and all that, okay? And this is just uh, uh, pictures of one neuron and all. So inside our human brains and all that, there's all kinds of connections and all that. 
Okay, so sometimes when you, you, you signal come to this neuron, what action you are going to take? Uh, there may be a few pathway. There may be a few pathway for you to initiate. Okay, but by doing routine, uh, uh, routinely, uh, training yourself and all that, and live in the uh, uh, normal world and all that, uh, you can strengthen some of the neurons connections. Then you become slowly become more and more positive, and slowly more and more good at handling certain things. Like for example, if you are good at playing piano, okay? So initially you play, play, maybe don't know how to play good, uh, play well and all that. But after practicing all these neuron connections uh, between them and all become strengthened, become actually more solid and all that, then they can play naturally. Uh, that is how we learn, okay? And also, of course, can be unlearned. Okay, so the construction of inner world when we were young until adult and all that is through the DNA, the family, the culture, religion, values, education, experience, and nowadays news, entertainment, social media, internet, all is actually shaping. Why is it? Why is it that people say that now education is not so easy? <laughs> mm -hmm. In the old days, let's say 20, 30 years ago, okay. Students who go to school, and then this is the part they learn from the textbook and all that. They learn from their family and all that. But nowadays, every school students and all that, they have access to the internet, Facebook, Instagram and all that. So they are being actually exposed to many, many different elements of information. Okay, All this will actually help them to shape or to change their neural network connection. So you can see that now also, Previous, previously, you may have that uh, a lot of people have common opinions. Now, because everybody is exposed to different, okay, then uh, they tend to have some also different opinions as well. So that's why the world now is becoming in such a way that a more open discussion, more consensus, more of this kind of thing is needed. Just imagine, every day, if I give you a new handphone to every one of you today. New handphone, same brand, same model of handphone. Okay, same apps install. After six months, I ask you all of you to come back and you check your handphone and all that. Each one of you have different interface, different apps install, different communications and uh, notices and messages in your WhatsApp and whatever. It's each one of these is unique, right? It's just like human world now well huh? just like human world now okay so by understanding this one if we want to change our bad habits if we want to learn new things then this nobel laureate uh professor uh daniel kahneman in his book thinking fast and slow he actually shared with us how we can actually help ourselves to become better every day okay but because neural network it takes time uh, so no, don't worry that the progress is slow, but it can actually do it if you continue to practice it. Okay, he said that actually all our words, uh, we have two system of thinking in our brain. Everybody was saying system one is actually fast, automatic, frequent, emotional, stereotyped, uh, unconscious. Okay, like for example, you go to a restaurant, you know this is the thing you are going to order. <laughs> Because you have good experience of eating that. You go to a mixed rice, uh, economy rice shop, you pick this one, this one. Why? Because your neural network inside there has been connected previously. You eat this one, you like it. Or this is the same as the food in your hometown, you like it. Okay? System one. Okay? So sometimes you say, he's uh, somebody very emotional. It's also in the neural network. Okay? But... It's possible for us to change it. Like sometimes I see that person, I hate that person. Why? <laughs> Over the years, maybe a lot of things and all that. So you hate that person. Again, it is possible because all this neural network can be changed. Okay. So how to change? The system two is actually a slow, effortful. You have to put in as some effort, infrequent, logical, calculating, and also conscious. That is the one that will actually take a little bit of effort, change your mind. For example, you always like to eat the chakwe tiao in this uh, restaurant. Okay. Now, after a while, you went, uh, you, you, today you go there again and you order the same chakwe tiao. 
not so good. Lah. How come? Then you check, oh, this, the owner say, the cook, the previous cook has left. Now you're having a, <laughs> another cook and all that. So what do you do? You use your system tool to change your mind. Say, oh, the cargo down here may not be that good. So next time you come here, you won't straight away order that same charcoal tail anymore. That means you can change. Okay. A lot of time I like to give you uh, uh, give another good example. Okay. I'd like to maybe share with you again. Huh? If now I bring to you a brew durian, durian, brew, brew durian, I say this is very delicious. <laughs> Do you like to take it? Like to try it? Brew durian. So maybe you say, no, 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 I don't want to try. But I eat in front of you or oh, brew durian. Oh, I say delicious, no? Then I say, please uh, try a little bit. And, uh, then you say, uh, okay, uh, I try a little bit. Uh. Then you taste a little bit. Wow, it's different. No, it's different from Musang King. It's very tasty and all that. Okay. Never mind. A month later, I bring the brew durian to you. At that time, you say, yeah, yeah, come, come, come. I can go and taste it. All right. Okay. So the first time when I bring the brew durian, you use a system one because your neuron connection. Okay. You say that, ah, no, brew durian, not so good. I don't know. I'm not taste it and all that. But after you taste it, you use system two to construct the neuron network. Okay. Neural network. You connect this one. Okay. Then you connect it. You say, then you like this brew durian. So the next, after one month, when I bring the blue durian to you, your system one will work already because it's all in your neural network already. It's in a neural network. So in Buddha's teaching, he always says that every day, why it's important to cultivate your mind, uh, have, uh, do good deeds, okay? Say good words, okay? Have uh, uh, good minds, a virtual mind and all that. Because all this will actually slowly use our system two and all that to change what we have system one. Then slowly, when you slowly you move along that direction, then you say, that, oh, that person is not that. Uh, I can, maybe some now I can observe uh, the good points about that person. You don't hate that person more. Okay. Then you look at things, things become uh, challenging, difficult thing come. You say that, ah, life is like that one. Uh, I can handle it more. So slowly, slowly, you can see that the, the, the world is brighter. You can see more from the positive side. Then it is your own will. If you want to put in effort, every day count it and what, very soon you will be able to do so. Professor Delnin Kahneman actually tell us this way. Tell us this way. Okay. Now, the other one is actually about the flow. A lot of times we have the ability to focus, you know, all of us actually, in fact, you experience a lot of flow state. Now, first of all, I refer you to the upper left corner of the picture. There's one uh, cliff climber, right? Cliff climber. This cliff climber, you know, this is a very dangerous spot. <laughs> the moment you are not paying attention, uh, it's, it's, it brings danger to your life. But why are those uh, cliff climbers love this spot so much? Because when they are doing this one, they have to be fully focused in the activities they want. And because they are fully focused, their mind is very peaceful. Internally, uh, their mind is very peaceful and they like this kind of feeling. Huh? So just uh, in, in normal days, a lot of times, uh, 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 this is what we call a flow state. Lah. In positive psychology, uh, uh, a flow state is in the is, is the mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement and enjoyment in the process of activity. So time pass without you realizing it. Time pass without you you realizing it. A lot of time we have some people like cooking ah uh, cook 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 oh, one hour already uh, enjoy so much because why they focus. They don't keep, after doing something, go and check <laughs> WhatsApp. After a little bit, go and check TikTok and all that. Eh? They focus on the mind. Okay? Sometimes when we do drawing, we play music, and I, or when we are watching movies, or we are watching TV series, we fully focus and all that. Not 
after a while, when, when we watch some nowadays, it's quite common. When we watch a TV series, uh, then suddenly a, a advertisement pop up. Then naturally, people will just reach out <laughs> to the handphone, then disturb their mind again. So they can't enjoy the movie. So if we can actually in our life create more and more these flow states, more and more these flow states, then naturally you feel that there's meaning. You, because you enjoy, you feel fulfilled, then there's a meaning in your life in order. Okay? Ah, that is what we call flow state. Now, how to reach this flow state? Huh? In fact, there's a graph to show you. Okay? If you are given a simple task, okay, it's so easy. So a lot of people do multitasking. <laughs> okay? You won't reach this flow state. But if you are given a task which is a little bit challenging, okay, a little bit challenging and all that, then you actually be more focused and you can reach the flow state. But if you're giving a task which is so much difficult, like you ask me to, 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 to read theory of relativity and all that, then may, I may give up. I won't reach this flow state and all that. Huh? So you can adjust yourself. Doing yourself every day a little bit more challenging you do. Don't go and do very challenging. A little bit challenging and then you have the flow state. Then you gain your skill. Then you challenge a new stage, new state and all that. Okay? Why people like to play games? You all know that why people like to play games? Because you play games, you always start from the beginning level. Okay? Then you achieve. Oh, okay. Give you confidence. I go to the next level, next level, next level, next level, and all that. Okay? So that is actually something about how to achieve flow state. Okay? Uh, I have few, just a few small slides left. Huh? Okay? Now, so in this case, I'd like to share with you about in, in this book, uh, uh, the author traits and all that. Okay? In more, the emotional intelligence author Daniel Goleman and Professor Richard Davidson, they wrote this author traits to study meditation using cognitive science and psychology, the latest cognitive science technology. According to them, uh, nowadays, for example, mindfulness-based stress reduction uh, courses are very popular in multinational companies such as Google, Apple. Google, Apple now regular courses on this mindfulness-based stress reduction, okay? Uh, I think in our university, we also have some mindfulness courses for staff and students, okay? Now, according to their, their, their uh, experiment, after eight weeks of 30 hours of MBSR training, the stress response of amygdala reduced by 50%. Now, inside our brain, there's one, what we call amygdala. That is a control center for emotions. So when that, control center is very actually active, we become very emotional, very, very emotional. They found out that just by doing through, going through eight weeks of 30 hours of MBSR training, uh, by practicing mindfulness and all that, uh, they can reduce the activity of amygdala by 50%. You help people to control better, okay? And then also, recent year has been a lot of increase on papers uh, on meditation and mindfulness now. Uh. Oh, the other one is actually they find out that there's one thing that is actually give you a quick effect uh, is, and strong effect is actually meta meditation in loving kindness. They found out that if at night or during meditation and all that, or just now we have our sharing of merits and all that, when we send out this meta meditation or just say that I wish everybody, uh, myself to be in good health, to be uh, to have wellness and all that. I wish my family members, my father, mothers, my family members to be in good health. I wish my relative, I wish my company colleagues, I wish my classmate, I wish my everybody in the in the world, the uh, all beings and all that. This kind of kindful thoughts and all that, uh, it can reduce the activity of amigara. Uh, and then you can really see the effect of calm and all that coming very soon. This is from their fMRI research and all that. Huh? So there's something very important for us to take note. Lah. And they also found out that after three months of meditation, 540 hours, activity of teromeris increases and slow down aging in fact. In fact, this was written by another Nobel laureate, huh? uh, Professor Blackburn, uh, in this book. Professor Beckman, he, he, she actually shows that, uh, in fact, if you do this kind of uh, meditations and all that, uh, inside our body, 
when the cell, they actually do the uh, division of cells and all that. Uh, then after each division, the telomere, uh, 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 the, the tip of this uh, DNA uh, will become shorter, shorter, and until it comes to a state that it cannot divide anymore, then the cell dies. It cannot divide anymore. They found out that this telomerase uh, is uh, the enzyme uh, that will actually help it to uh, lengthen that one so that your cell can continue to divide and divide and all that. They found out that meditation surprisingly have this effect of lengthen this. So meditation can lengthen or can actually slow down the aging effect. Uh, this is actually from the research by the Professor Beckburn, the Nobel laureate uh, in uh, biology and medicine because of her uh, discovery uh, of work of the effect of telomerase and telomere. Okay, so this is another thing, you know, okay, but they also found out that beside meditation, uh, uh, having a sports activities, regular exercise, and then have a plant-based, more plant-based uh, 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 meals and all that, all this will have the effect of slow down, slowing down the aging effect. Huh? Very interesting, okay. Then uh, the other one is actually mindfulness training and meditation reduce activity of default mode network in the brain. Uh, default mode network is something that is important for me to share with you today. Okay. Now, they have found out that uh, inside our brain, there is a few modules of components of neural network connections in our brain connected to be called as default mode network. Okay. This default mode network is like this one. In the old days, when we are actually like the primitive world and all that, the moment we finish eating our this meal, we have to think about what is the coming disasters. What will we do? Where we need to move next tomorrow? Where to find food and all that? Okay. So they always have this default mode network to actually come out and you start thinking about future worrying about what is next tomorrow and all that. But in modern days, a lot of time is quite natural, your daily life. You don't have to worry about this kind of thing. Okay, But they found out that the moment when we are not focused in doing certain things, you automatically initiate this default mode network. You automatically uh, insert... Uh, 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 energize this default mode network. And this default mode network will start thinking about the past, start thinking about future and start connecting and all that and then get ourselves more, more worried or whatever. This is called default mode network. And that is because of this one that just now the Harvard professor's research say that if you are not focused, your wandering mind you will be not so happy because the moment we are not focused on still doing certain things, we start thinking of something, thinking of something and all that. And then this negative thought sometimes lingers and all that. And then you start worrying about things and then you become not so happy. It's because of this default mode. But the way to overcome is actually simple. Just be mindful. Be focused on your everything you do. You found that when you are in flow state just now, it's so calm. Okay? Is so uh, 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 peaceful and those kind of things. Okay. So sometimes well, I was just wonder because uh, many students also ask about these questions uh, that, for example, at night, how do we actually, because sometimes when you, at night before sleep, uh, if you actually uh, watch the handphone and all that, most likely uh, uh, after 12, 1, 2, you, you still watch the, a lot of YouTube or whatever this kind of thing and not because the Blu-ray or whatever exciting thing coming out. Sometimes maybe exciting thing. Sometimes maybe uh, uh, something worry you uh, and all because all these things will come out and all that. So cannot sleep and all that. Okay. So one way is actually by knowing how default mode network do. Do something that you can focus your mind. Okay. Or something that you don't go and actually think about many things then you find out you regain your control. Uh, one way is actually the moment you are cooking, just practicing that you cook, just focus on cooking. Then you have the flow state. The moment you're watching TV, enjoy watching TV. Okay, Then you have the flow state. 
the more and more you know you do mindfulness and all that then slowly you start having less distraction and slowly slowly you you become less addicted to mobile phones or internet or whatever and at night one way that is quite good is actually one way of course at night before you go to bed you can do meditation during a meditation you focus on your breath and all that or you let go everything let go everything uh, after all let go everything the nature has its cause effect and conditions there are some you cannot change and let go then you have a peaceful sleep okay that's one way of meditation the other way i find it quite useful is actually before you go to bed read some books <laughs> read some books because people may say hey, read big books boring or whatever lah. Or for example don't worry you just don't need to read, read a whole chapter you just say that every day night before you go to bed you actually read three pages or five pages just a small little target right so after three pages and all because reading books huh, the moment you read books huh, you focus on reading so you start reducing the activity of default mode network your 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 mind become more comfortable more peaceful and then if the book is boring never mind it lets you go to sleep faster okay and if it's not that, that not so boring okay at least you learn something from the book <laughs> okay and then because you are reading some book something the book uh, and of course uh, not, not no need to be textbook or whatever uh, something you like uh, then because you enjoy reading this one you come down on the default mode network easy for you to go to bed uh, that's one way but of course other people uh, i once actually was ha having the opportunity uh there was a uh, there was uh there are people like uh maybe older than my generation or whatever in the in the time when we all grew up with milo you know remember milo okay it's quite common at that time that sometimes people uh, every night before going to sleep drink a cup of milo <laughs> a warm milo then they find out oh very easy to sleep and there are also people that every night uh, they, they have a, a, a bath, a, 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 a hot bath and all that. Then after that, they relax everything, they can go to bed. So just find your night ritual, night ritual and all that. Simple, but the thing is actually, uh, let the default mode network come down by focusing on some simple activities that you can do not active uh, exercise you can do some yoga meditation or whatever okay but why is it that watching tv or watching this one may not be good is because especially those uh, on mobile phone or through internet it's because sometimes when you watch this one then you pops up other things you pops up other things then you go and check your whatsapp or, check, or you pops up other things and when you when you actually watch this one then it come up with another one that attracts you more to to, to watch then you drag on and all that huh? so that is a way lah, huh? default mode network simple thing is actually just trying yourself to be more and more focused and slowly it's, it's not within the, a day or whatever slowly you come like you regain this mindfulness and slowly you find that your state of mind is actually more comfortable and slowly you find out that you have actually better control and then you find a uh, flow state and all that things become better and better this is according to all the research now. the other one is actually this uh professor lubov miski he is a professor focusing on studying happiness okay then he say that a lot of time people say that you become success then only you happy. A lot of time people think you got the number one in the class, you win these prizes, you got promotion, okay, and then uh, you become happy. But they actually survey over 225 papers uh, and survey uh, the result from 275,000 people. They found out, in fact, the effect is the other way. Let yourself every day to become more happy. Oh, sorry, there's a spelling mistake in happiness. Huh? Okay. Uh, uh, let yourself be more happy. Uh, let yourself be more mindful. Appreciate what, what you have. Thank you about just merely being uh, in this moment and all that. Huh? Then you slowly you can see that people will come to you. People will actually uh, come to help. Uh, uh, you become more successful in many things. 
And because of that one, you focusing on this part of this one, you also don't actually be, uh, you don't expect or desire a lot of things. So you can't find that things become much more easier and easier for you to get success. Uh, so this is actually from scientific research. Uh, you can find out more information. Of it. She, she is the professor uh, who is focused is about happiness. Okay, so the last slide. Okay, so living in a challenging time, uh, these are some of the simple steps. Lah, okay, while living, working, or doing, be mindful and live at present. This is something that, in fact, when we do meditation, we are also trying to do so. So, if you can extend beyond your know, normal life, later when you do meditation, you actually be able to do better. Then, number two, contemplate everything is changing and interdependent and also possible. Anything is possible, okay? Uh, so number three, anything can happen when the condition is right. Accept anything that has happened and can happen and handle this when it arises. There's no something that everything follow your, what you have planned, uh, everything follow what you have actually uh, 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 orchestrated uh, or everything, uh, life is actually like what you expect in order because life is full of uncertainty as well. But, when the condition is right and all that. But number four, adapt to outside change and maintain inner mind tranquility. Okay. And number five, be grateful and send metta, loving kindness. It is a wonderful world. Always be thankful, be grateful when you have a good piece of meal, enjoy it and then thankful. When people help you, thankful. When you think, that, hey, the, today is a good day, uh, weather is good, uh, thankful and all that. Slowly, Using the, the what Professor Daniel Kamen change, your mind actually will change and slowly you see a, a, a better and better world and all that. Huh? And then repeat one to five to improve every day. In fact, if you look at this one, this is writing in a normal, uh, modern words. Lah. But if you will read Sutta and the teaching of Buddha, it's everywhere. Lah. It's everywhere and all that. Uh, just cultivate our mind. Uh, so today, uh, thank you very much uh, and uh, for your attention, <laughs> uh, focus attention here. Okay, and thank you so much.